Welcome to the Speak Podcast, produced by Launchpad 516 Studios. New episodes available every week on all your favorite podcast platforms. Speak is a public speaking platform for people with ideas and stories. Each Speak Talk features three key moments. The moment of truth, the moment of transformation, and the moment of impact. We host pop-up events all over the world, and now we are bringing our talks to your device. Our speakers are stepping onto the stage and into the spotlight, and now onto this podcast. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everybody, to a live recording of the Speak podcast. There's going to be a little bit of redundancy here and there because the folks that are listening to this at home after the fact were not at the live event that we were just at, Speak Growth. But I am George Andriopoulos, the architect and one of the co-leaders here at Speak. I'm Fred P. Bannon III, the builder and one of the co-leaders here at Speak. And I'm Jason Martin, the engineer and one of the co-leaders here at Speak. And we just finished up our one-year anniversary event, Speak Growth at the Nutty Irishman on November 30th. So big round of applause for all of our speakers today, guys. What an incredible event, huh? Yes, sir. How you feeling? How you feeling, boys? It was unbelievable. What a great event. So much energy. Um, I can't tell you how moved I was by all the speakers. Like, I came to tears a couple of times. What a great event. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's surprising sometimes. So, so for those of you that don't know the, the process that we go through here, we work with these speakers once we procure them. Uh, we have a whole program we go through. They submit drafts. We collaborate with them. We, go, we kind of go back and forth. They know their content better than anybody does, and we know speak better than anybody does. So we kind of collaborate to come to a talk that is fitting of this stage and that engages with our audiences. And having read through these drafts time after time and gone through our virtual rehearsals, I mean, these speakers put in a tremendous amount of work. But all of the times that I have read these and heard these, it's like the first time all over again when it's live. Every time, right? Because what I love about our process, because we have speakers from all different levels. Some people who are pros, this is what they do for a living. And some of the speakers, that's just their first time taking the stage. But one thing that we always emphasize, that if you come with a collaborative spirit, regardless of the level, you will shine. Because they know their content. We know speak. We build speak. We know the ins and outs. Our job is to amplify. Our job is to highlight them and put them in the best light so that all of you, all of us, can experience the stories that connects all of us. And um, I'm so grateful that on this one-year anniversary, it was so reminiscent of beginnings one year, one year ago just the emotion and everything. So we, I, I'm grateful to all the speakers that took the stage tonight because, um, yeah, we, we, I had an emotional roller coaster, but in a good way, in a good way. Absolutely. You know what, Fred, I think it's time to kick this thing off. Why don't you introduce, introduce our speakers and bring them up to the stage? All right. So, well, let, can you guys just come up? We have Adrian coming up. We have Jim, Kathy, Andrea, Dr. Natalie, Sarah, and Leah. Thank you all. Put your hands together for them. I screw up the order. <laughs> yeah, forgive me. No, they, they messed up. But that's because Jim's being a gentleman, helping everybody that's out. That's right. A gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> oh, Jim, you're right here. Come on over. Right next to me. All right, so you know what? Let's just give everybody a proper introduction on the podcast here. So first speaker here we had was Adrian Goodwin. We have Kathy James, Andrea Deloney, Dr. Natalie Lillevoix, Jim Sabellico, Sarah Cavanaugh, and Leah Garina. So everybody give them a round of applause one more time. So I want to I wanna dive right in. This is our one year anniversary event um, and our theme is growth, which for us was really the next evolution of beginnings. As we sort of planned what we, <coughs> excuse me, what we would be doing for the one year anniversary, we knew we wanted to come back home. Uh, you know, this place is where we started everything. Well, next door to here, but this town. Um, we knew we wanted to grow and evolve on our theme. So growth was really the natural evolution we decided for beginnings. And it, it really came to us in in a minute, you know, we, we, we were, we, we thought we were gonna have this whole contrived conversation about what the theme was gonna be and it was just kind of easy for us to do. So uh, I wanna start with Adrian. We're talking about growth. What does growth mean to you 
and how have you grown through this experience here with Speak? I am growing as you just handed me the mic. <laughs> I, I, I just think for me, growth is just the ability to just share a little bit more about myself. And every time I unpack those layers as to what is the engine behind who I am and what I do and what drives me, that is when I grow, is when I let go of the vulnerability and share my story. I am liberated to move further even, even more, and it gives me the confidence to keep going every time I share a little bit about myself. Yeah, so we, we had some fun uh, collaborating. Uh, you, you can keep it. We had some con fun collaborating uh, back and forth with, the, with each other. Obviously, the theme of this event is growth, so what that means is all of our talks today are going to correlate to that theme uh, somehow. So, um, you know, hearing your story um, and, and what you've gone through and what you've persevered through in life and where you are today was just so uh, incredible. What would you say to somebody, or I would say really to the young version of yourself, you know, who has not had that growth yet, what advice would you give her moving forward? Keep going. Like, really just keep your eyes on a prize. And, and that was just the message, the theme of my story, is to just think about the end goal and then trust the process. So no matter what life throws you, think about where do you want to be? Where do you want to see? How do you want to feel in your life and then get there? Whatever that means for you, whatever obstacles you have to overcome, just know that I, this is where I want to be in my life and you'll find yourself there. So perseverance and resilience, right? Resilience is non-negotiable. You have to keep moving. Awesome, thank you so much, we appreciate that. Kathy, let me ask you, uh, your story is so incredible and I'm really interested to know how do you go from a moment where your child didn't want you reading to him to being able to speak on a stage about your growth? When I first started my journey in my 20s, <clears throat> I remember sitting in my living room and I was watching Joyce Myers, right? And I remember listening to her story. I think it was maybe the first time that I had heard her story and I realized that it was very similar to my own. And I knew then that if she could do it, then I could do it. Mm -hmm. And I visualized myself in, in her shoes, speaking, sharing my story to help heal others. And here we are 20 years later. This year I started speaking, but I, I've been working in the community and doing other things and just little by little sharing my story, becoming more comfortable, being uncomfortable. But I knew 20 years ago that I was gonna be doing this and it, here it is a reality. So I don't know if I answered your question, but. Absolutely, no, that's great. And then the visualization process, kind of what does that look like for you briefly? At that moment, when I was in my 20s, I know that I'm gonna be on bigger stages. I know that I'm going to make an impact globally. And I hold true to that, not because of the fame, but because I feel that within my bones, this is what I'm called to do. So I see myself in front of the people that I'm going to help extend hope to. I love that. Thank you so much. Powerful, powerful. So the question I have for the person, it, it is, this is a little close to home because there's a personal connection there. So Andrea, um, you your talk was literally about growing through grief, right? The title was Grow Through Grief. How hard was it to finally say those words out loud and how do, how do you, I was gonna say how does it feel, but how do you feel now? I'm, and I'm talking about like just the catharsis of giving a talk like that, like how do you feel? Yeah, I feel relieved, I feel stronger, I feel more alive I think than I did before. 
You know, this was a story where, and I have to preface this by saying, I talk a lot for work. So I am in no way shy to be on a stage or have a microphone in my hand. But when it came to do a talk about my parents, I mean, reliving an experience that I had only talked about in therapy years ago, and now having to, you know, intentionally spend time going back through all of those experiences again and then again, um, it was difficult. It was difficult for a number of reasons. It was difficult because I knew my community that I would be inviting to be here. I know their stories and most, if not all of them who are here today were also there in, in real time for both of those. So this wasn't just an experience for me to release, but it was also, I think, an experience for everyone who was closest to me and to be able to not only see me and hear me share, but for me to be able to do that, looking out and seeing them here and being here for and with me, I just feel so powerful, so powerful. Excellent. You know, something I, I, I always talk about is how, you know, growth doesn't take place in isolation. We grow in community. And your talk was such an emotional roller coaster because you talk about grief and everything, but you talk about how you came to life, if you will, through community. So going forward, responsible storytelling, right? You did not leave us in the depths, but you brought us up and giving people a way to, to come out of whatever they're doing through community. So you kind of mentioned in the talk, but on a personal level, what is community to you? Hmm. To me, community is safety, community is peace, Community is comfort, community is understanding, um, community is warmth, community is all the things that you don't have when you keep it to yourself. So, you know, when I think about my experiences and, you know, if it was something I had to share with other people is that when you're going through those experiences, whether it's grief or anything, and you find yourself wanting to retreat and be alone, just know that once you, you get past that part of the process and you open yourself up to really share and allow for people to be there for you, I promise you they want to be there. But, you know, as I said, they don't know how to because they don't know whether or not you're ready for it. So community has been the most amazing space to not only get myself into or back into after those moments, but to keep myself there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sarah, it was an incredibly brave uh, talk to give, especially since today, November 30th, is your mother's birthday. Can you talk about the level of strength that it takes to stay composed on the stage when giving such a personal talk? Well, thank you. She would have been 89 today. Um, I think Thank you, first of all, for saying that I was composed. Um, <laughs> I think it was somehow learning to walk alongside. Um, once you've sort of healed some of those hurts and traumas that you're then able to actually share and walk alongside your nervousness. I guess I have never shared about her um, and, uh, or about my child's visit to the hospital. And I feel like this evening gave me some freedom to talk more about that and to really um, hopefully reach out to other parents who are experiencing the same. Um, I really appreciate the question. And uh, it took me uh, a while to get here. So I. Thank you. Gotcha. If you would indulge me, could you maybe share a little bit about that freedom that you speak of that you now feel? Yeah, well, George said something to me that really helped over the last week. And is it okay if I share it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he shared that when he first came out and spoke in a personal way, in a way it cleaned out the basement, and that really struck me. And I've been... I've been holding on to two things this week. One is the freedom it gives to actually speak your truth. And the second is um, a very dear elder of mine said, don't push the river. 
And for me, that was don't force it and just tell your story. Um, even if you have to memorize and you mess up, just keep going and don't push the river. So. I love that. Just tell your story. I love that. I love that. Uh, Dr. Natalie, I mean, when you think about it, right, in all honesty, you are one of the reasons that we're here today. And George mentioned earlier that we met at um, your event, and that's how we got connected. So how does it feel transitioning from being behind the stage as a producer and now stepping into the spotlight onto the stage and giving a, a talk in such a powerful way? What is that transition like? The transition is, uh, is like super humbling. I said, first of all, um, you know, hearing that this venue and this platform grew out of the two of you meeting at a TEDx, I mean, it's like, it's like what you want. It's like a dream come true. You want people to kind of connect at your events and you want them to go forth and do bigger things. And this is a bigger thing. Um, so it's very exciting for me. It's also very humbling for me to kind of come out from the production side because it's easy to produce and tell your speakers, oh, just get out there. <laughs> it's so much harder to actually be the speaker that has to memorize and get in front of a group of people and be vulnerable. Um, these talks are different than the platform that I work with and they're your personal stories, you know, and it's about who you are and how you want to connect with others. And those are very different stories. Um, and they're very um, personal in a way that makes you vulnerable when you're up there. So it's difficult, it's challenging, but it's also very rewarding. So having been on both sides of the aisle, if you will, right, what is one lesson you've learned, just a piece of nugget that you can just share with us from whatever perspective? I think the lesson I've learned is about patience and being patient both with um, speakers that are practicing and having, you know, challenges, but also as yourself as a speaker, being patient with the process and understanding that the process is the process. It's going to take as long as it takes. Um, you may have times where you're not exactly focused or you can't get the words out, but that's because of the emotion behind it. It's not because of, you know, lack of trying. So I think that's what I would say would be the most important piece. Awesome, yeah, and, and thank you again, Nat. And, you know, there's, um, there's a silly idiom that some people say that I, I've never agreed with that says uh, something like, those who cannot do teach how to do, right? Um, but when you, when you step out of that comfort zone of, of being a producer of something and step out of the comfort zone and jump in and actually do the thing, it, it takes a lot of courage, right? It takes a lot of courage, and you were, you were great tonight, so thank you for... I appreciate that. Thank you stage. for the opportunity. Yeah. And we've been trying to get you on a stage for a long time. <laughs> for a long time. So, Leah, uh, you and I have a, a personal connection that started with your son. So inviting you to speak at, event, at an event like this was a no-brainer uh, for me. Um, and I'm happy to have been a part of the community um, that, that supported your family during that, that difficult time. And, and it's... If you knew the whole story, like it, it is such a crazy connection of how we wind up. We do you know, know forever. Yeah, <laughs> we're Greek, so that's that's what it is. Yeah, when you're Greek, yeah. My wife calls it the Greek mafia, even though there's no such thing. <laughs> Wink. Wink. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it says the two guys dressed in black over there. <laughs> Who are priests, by the way, so I didn't mean anything by that. <laughs> Um, actually, you know what, let, let, we, we can tell that story real quick of, of how, we, how we met. Do you want to? Sure. Yeah. So follow this. So my husband is a priest. My brother is also a Greek Orthodox priest. My brother serves in West Babylon where George goes to church. So my brother is George's priest. So when our son was diagnosed, George got word through my brother and word no, no. that, no. Through Constantine's through. OT. Oh, through the OT. Who, Michelle, who oh, is a friend of mine. That's right, I'm sorry. Yeah, and a former business partner So there was a double mine. connection there, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So essentially, fast forward, um, 
George got word that we were in desperate need of utilizing the services of, of the Ronald McDonald House when we were um, uh, planning to go to Philadelphia for Constantine's radiation treatment. And getting into that particular Ronald McDonald House is like climbing Mount Everest. And George was one of our adv advocates to make that happen. And it changed our lives. It absolutely changed our lives. So, and the, the, the further connection, which is what's even crazier, was that her, her husband um, is a priest in the church that I was baptized in, in Queens, and, and went to for the first eight years of my life. So it was just completely insane. Yeah, completely insane how, how many connections we had. Small world. Small yeah. world. Yeah. Greek mafia, not small world. Um, so talk to us about how, because we talked about this during our collaboration process, talk to us about how hard it was to limit this talk to 10 minutes when you had so many stories to tell, especially about community and miracles that happened to you. Oh my gosh, I said to George, I could talk about a million different things and come up with 10 minutes worth of material. Oh man, well, the, the difficult part was, is that every moment was a miraculous moment. But I think, you know, for me, one of the big light bulbs was what I spoke about tonight because, and I, and I chose that moment truthfully because my husband is usually the one behind the microphone. And I usually am not in this kind of situation. So I, I selfishly wanted to take the opportunity to have people hear my perspective of the story. And what was the other part of the question? Why it's so hard to keep it to 10 minutes Probably when you have so many minutes. stories to tell. Well, <laughs> also, your answer must be under 10 minutes, Lee. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it's hard because literally there was just miracle after miracle. And George and I were talking for like 40 minutes, and I was just spewing all this info. I'm like, where am I going with this? But it was very hard. And I think, oh, man, I think I just wanted to focus on where it all started. Because from there, it was just like the yellow brick road. Just start at that one point and go. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that's how stories that's how stories happen when you take a stage like this. And, and hopefully, this is not the last time that you take a stage like this. But there's a million different directions that you can look, a million different perspectives where you could look at one story and and tell a bunch of different stories that'll help a bunch of different people on it. So we we thank you for the honesty and and sharing the story so much. <clears throat> Jim, I want to follow up with you because you and also you and I also uh, we're we're from this place. We're both from Farmingdale. We are Dalers. We share a, a brotherhood. We share a history. Why now? Why is it important for you to get up on a stage now and share your message? There is a legitimate possibility I might not make it home tonight. <laughs> Truthfully, like we don't think about that, but we're all gonna die, and it's gonna happen not when you want. And I know that sucks to hear, but it's true. And I woke up today, I've been given the gift of this day, I feel a responsibility to use it for something. And just like I missed being there for my son's birthday cake, I don't wanna miss an opportunity to be there. So whether that's being here to speak and to share my story, and if it helps one person have a different perspective, like that's a responsibility that I feel because I was given the gift of waking up today and not everyone had that. And I know that, again, there's a chance I might not make it home, which sucks. No one wants to talk about that. We just want to think that we're going to live forever and this happily ever after. But life is precious and it could be over like that. And if you don't make the most of the moment you have, it's a waste. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I know you have two beautiful kids, um, one of them being a son. I have a son as well and, and three daughters, um, who is just starting to kind of pick things up from this kind of stuff that I share, the same type of stuff that you're sharing. He's 13 years old and he's, he's kind of starting to get it, which really excites me, you know, because I've been working hard to, to get that through that thick 13-year-old skull, because he, he was kind of a pain in the ass for the last couple of years, but he's sort of, <laughs> he's sort of like, Making his way, and, and yeah, he's making that turn, and you see a couple of glimmers where you're like, oh, yeah, I think he, he's starting to get it. So how is that with your kids? And I'm, I'm asking especially your son as a man. Um, is he kind of starting to, to see 
what you're about now? Is he starting to understand that? Because I know you've made a tremendous shift. Uh, we talked about it at the virtual rehearsal the other day. You, you rebranded your company of 10 years recently, which is a big deal. That's hard and, and sometimes crazy when you think about it to, to make a change and change the name, but you rebranded it Hardcore Growth. And, and I know that you're all about this mission right now. So is he kind of seeing this? And, and talk to me about that. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, thank you. Um, it was 12 years, by the way. Thank you. Uh, 12 years, my, you know my today's mistake. An, today's an important day for you. So I want to congratulate you on your 10-year anniversary today. Thank you. This thank is my, the 10-year anniversary of my other company. So thank you, Jim. You're welcome. So to answer your question, they're always watching. Like, they don't listen to what you say. If anyone has kids, you know they don't listen to what you say. <laughs> but they watch what you do. And it is so freaking important to give them the opportunity that we may not have had. And I look around and I'm like, there's so many adults that I deal with, myself included, who didn't have that definition of possibility growing up. Like, when I grew up, my dad was the hardest worker in the room. He was gone before I woke up, and he would come home after I went to sleep. And that's what I modeled. And I didn't have the opportunity to do a lot, of, a lot of things that I wish I did. And through no fault of his own, he was doing what he was told was the right thing from his dad. And I feel, again, that certain responsibility to show them a definition of what's possible. Right? I don't want my kid to go through life just ho-humming it and thinking he's got to be what everyone else is doing. Or he's got to be a victim of everyone else who wants to go and, and do whatever they want to do. I want him to have the self-confidence, the belief in himself to know who he is and to trust his identity, to not have to worry about what are they going to say. I go for walks with my son around the neighborhood, and we pick up garbage while we walk. And let me tell you something. Even as genuine of an act as that is, me and my son walking around the neighborhood picking up garbage while we do it, it's pretty wholesome. People will point and laugh that we are walking, picking up garbage. I love that. Because it gives him an opportunity to be like, what are they talking about, Dad? We're picking up garbage. We're helping the community they live in. And he's got that armor on him at 10. What's that going to be like when he's 30 and he's got a group of peers? And he can show that to his kids when he's got identity and possibility. And he can grow up in a world that, that that's normal. That's what it's about for me. They call that growth, I think. They call that growth. All right, so I have one final question for the group. I'm going to have all of you answer the same question. Adrian, we'll start with you. What is your hope for this talk that you gave today, and what impact would it have in your wildest dreams? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I hope that my talk inspires one person to just keep moving forward, even when those roadblocks come up, um, especially as my journey through motherhood was from the inception to I gave birth, it was almost like a three-year journey. And I didn't share this in the talk, but I remember getting an award one day um, downtown Brooklyn at one of the courts. And I'm looking at the clock and I'm saying to myself, I got to give myself an IV shot, IVF shot. And, and I'm in the bathroom and the bathroom is crowded. And I'm like, okay, I, I got to sterilize this counter. I got to prep my needles and I got to give myself a shot. So I had to block everything out in order to keep persevering, keep moving forward. So that's just my message to you and anyone else who's gonna watch this. Get to your end goal, whatever that looks like for you. On the biggest stage, I just wanna just talk everywhere I go. <laughs> um, here, na internationally, I just wanna be on somebody's platform, just inspiring women to negotiate the life that they truly desire to live, right? And having those non-negotiables in order for you to get there. Excellent. Thank you so much. Can you repeat the question? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. In your wildest dreams, what impact would you hope that your talk has on the world? I would do this for one person. But I want, I want generational cycles broken. I want hearts healed. Even if I never know, I want that. 
I want that because I know it's possible. Just like I said, if she can do it, I can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. That's what I want. Legit. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. I think for me, the impact that I would love for my story tonight to have is for people who are experiencing that deep traumatic grief to know that there is so much life after it. And when you take the sadness and the hurt and the confusion from your grief and shift it to honoring the legacy of those you're grieving, your motivation, your drive, your inspiration, your why begins to look so different. Um, and so to that person, I would hope that, you know, before they make that choice to give up, they make that one call or they put up that one Facebook post or that one Instagram post or tweet or whatever it is, whatever platform they need to reach out, post that, share it, send it, do whatever. So that way your community knows and they can see your bat signal and they can be there for you too. Awesome. Thank you. Jim. I want to give people permission to be vulnerable. Um, it's not something that I think men in particular are comfortable with. Being emotional, saying they need help, honoring their wives in a way that doesn't make them look weak or insecure. You know, I think we've gotten so far to the point that men need to put on this armor of I'm so super masculine and I can't cry, I can't show emotions, I can't ask for help, I can't do all this stuff. And it leaves you broken. And I want a world where I can be like, hey George, I love you. And that's normal. And we can have brotherhood and we can tell our guy friends we love them and we could tell people what we feel and we could show emotion and a man isn't just this cold emotionless servant who goes out and works and then comes home and has no life. Like he shows up and he honors his wife he honors his family, he gives possibility to other people, and he lives with his heart on his sleeve. And to me, I just, I wanna give other people permission to know that that's also okay to be a man and do that. Excellent, thank you, Jim. <laughs> I think um, with my talk, I want people to understand that having the financial pieces in place is not enough. I know that this is a world run by money, you know, money works the world around, everything revolves around money, but that's not the primary thing that we need to focus on, right? We need to focus on family, on people, on connections, on community, on those things. And I think that the talk also touches on mental health and the fact that some things cause you to fall into an abyss and that you sometimes need support, lots of support, not just a therapist, but your friends, anybody that's willing um, to listen to you, people that you care about, people that you trust, that you can talk to about those things. And I think those are the pieces that are really important um, for us to consider. And I hope that that message kind of gets out there and reaches other people. Absolutely, thank you so much. What impact would you love for your talk to have on the world? Well, first of all, it's been such a pleasure to meet all of my fellow speakers and hear their stories. And I resonate with what Jim said about only having today. I'm really committed to the conversation, uh, the difficult conversations to have about grief. There's so much grief on so many levels. And I hope to open up conversations around people's suffering, because I think human suffering is something we all experience and it crosses all differences. And I think just making it through tonight and meeting all of you, I think I've met my goal for the talk, so. That's fantastic, thank you. I think for myself, I want to make sure that whatever parents are out there struggling if they have a child um, or a family member um, going through some kind of mental uh, uh, medical difficulty, that finding someone to speak to that can comfort them, it doesn't necessarily have to be my words from tonight, 
but just knowing that they have someone that they can be on the same level with. I couldn't speak to people um, who didn't understand our situation. I've had strangers call me saying, so-and-so said that you know your son went through this and I just wanna talk to you. And those are the people who get it because you lived it and you went through it. So on a small level, I hope for that. On a global level, I hope that people understand that when families go through something like this, that trauma is real for all members of the family. And it doesn't stop once you get um, a clear bill of health and you say, my child is cancer free. That life of you know, medical intervention goes for years, decades. And people still need that community and they still need that support and love and prayer and outreach. So if you're listening and you know someone who's going through it, please reach out to them. And if you are going through it, reach out to someone that can help you. Excellent. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all of you for uh, not only being a part of our one year anniversary show, Growth, but being part of our live speak podcast. You guys were all fantastic. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. Thank you. So now members in the audience, how are you feeling? Because I'm looking at your faces and these people are just hitting you in the heart. So reflective. Are you guys feeling good? Yes, absolutely. So the speakers, I just want to say what was the through line in all of your responses just now is you weren't looking for anything for yourself, but you're looking to make the world a better place, looking for other lives to be better. And I just want to tell you, you it already started tonight because during our intervention, I was walking around and people was telling me, Fred, you didn't tell me this was a, ther a therapy session, <laughs> right? And somebody was like, man, this is such a roller coaster uh, um, a journey. I was just like, because we get to experience human emotions, and that's what connects us. So again, thank you, everybody. That does it for this episode of the Speak Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, and anywhere that podcasts are downloadable. The link is also on our agenda page in the Turkish Eye Survey. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for being a part of this Amazing, amazing day. And I want to thank you all for celebrating the one-year anniversary of Speak. What's coming in year two? We have five Speak at the Studio shows coming. We're going to North Carolina. We're going to Austin, Texas. We're going back to Dallas, Texas. We're talking about a European tour. Right, we're going back to Belfast. We're talking about going to London. We have a ton going on. Follow us on social to keep up on what's happening with Speak and keep just supporting these incredible speakers and, and our platform, it means so much to us. So last thing I wanna do is, now that, now that the whole show's over, I wanna bring up these incredible speakers for a bow. So everybody, if you could all line up straight right here in front of us and take your final bow of the night. Right up. Everybody line yeah, up. Put your, your hands line together, you put your hands together. And bow. Good night, everyone, and get home safe. The Speak Podcast is brought to you by Launchpad 516 Studios, executive produced by Fred P. Banning, Jason Martin, and George Andriopoulos. Our theme song, Champions Day, is by Lupus Nocti. Incidental music, Melting Places, is by Andreas Cantu. Music and sound effects licensed through Epidemic Sound. The Speak Podcast is hosted with Podbean. Make sure to subscribe to this feed wherever podcasts are available and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts while you're at it. Follow Speak at Speak underscore event on Twitter and at Speak Event on all other social media platforms. Visit our website, speakevent.com, for upcoming events, channel partner, sponsorship, and Speak at Work opportunities. And follow all the great podcasts produced by Lunchpad 516 Studios.